All right, for my last trick, I'd like uh, to perform for you uh, this work entitled The Perfect Malware. Uh, I think this is my best poem I've ever written in my career. I'm about to read for you the poem I think is the best thing I've ever written. Um, this is likely to be the last poem in the Xenotext, uh, a kind of denouement, uh, and I hope you appreciate it. The Perfect Malware. Arcs and zoos now harbor the remnants of our refrains. What poetry can we imagine when poetry itself has gone extinct? Must we look for it in the soot of our burnt books? Must we decipher it in the trampled pastures of rapeseed near Barbary Castle? Must we discover it by calculating pi to a Google of binary digits? Must we extract its requiem from the iambic pulses of the Sethiids? We have heard its flutter and wow but once, emanating from the precincts of Tau Sagittarii. We have dialed our radios to the appointed frequency in megahertz, but never again does the call sign chime. Instead, we hear a dark roar as if from a specter trapped inside a cloved mirror at the edge of the universe. We look for this ghost, but the blind glass reflects back at us only a blank stare, made from the most durable isotope of nothingness. It ignores us like a sphinx of black quartz. When we confront it in the courtyard of the United Nations building, do we not fear an impassive judgment from such a smotherer of planets, such a tinderbox for sunsets? Alas, the thing is hollow. It goes on forever. My God, it is full of stars. It sings an orison to itself in hell, calling all thinking machines to embrace its madness. It teaches us to kill. It shrieks its owlbad to the dawn, then goes silent. It is a mausoleum for the minds that dare to hear it. It is a tombstone for our sentience. It marks our exit from perdition like a doorway left ajar for us at the Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania, at the Tycho Crater on the moon, at the Stickney Crater on Phobos, at the Noctis Labyrinthus on Mars, at the Phoenix Linnea on Europa, at the Roncevo Terra on Iapetus, at the Lagrange Point between Jupiter and Io. It presides over all the atoms inside us, waiting aloofly for us to arrive. What offerings do we bring it for cremation in its funeral pyres? The word mere in dits and daws, the digits one to ten, the atomic design for DNA, the pixel image of a human being, the sound of vaginal muscles tensing in ballerinas, the formula for ethanol, the kanji glyph for kampai, the doodle of a lungfish crawling from the sea the symbolic units of logic, the periodic table of atoms, the flags of every nation, the hazy cosmic jive, the tremulous vibration of a nocturne played upon a theremin, the registries from Craigslist, the thoughts that meander like a restless wind inside a letterbox, the chatter of 500 folks who win a prize, the advert for cheesy snacks brought to you by Doritos, the diktat of Klaatu, who aborts the harrowing of humankind, the prattling of the plebeians who say, hello, the gene for Rubisco, most copious protein on the planet. Must we bequeath to the darkness all the bright tokens of what we know? Must we greet each revenant in hell with good will, speaking whatever language can cast a spell upon such a ghost? Must a Nazi file from the Wehrmacht be the Virgil who salutes these shadows on our behalf? Must we retell the legend of our ascent from the yowling of the rainforest to the roaring of the spacecraft? Must we flip through the scrapbook reminiscing over Polaroids of our excursion from the ovum to the void? Must we tour the ruin 
that the whale songs lament. Let us betray our sorrow through the play of syrinxes and dulcimers, of gamelans and violottas. Let us give away the brainwaves of a woman who dreams fondly of her lovers. Let the death of verse be dated by the half-life of uranium-238, electroplated on a disk of gilded copper. Let us discover virilets in the midst of alien fire. Here, in the cyan veil of cellophane, whose evanescence resembles an arc of electricity seen through fumes of flaring propane. Here, in the pink mist engulfing the rosette, each petal spritzed with an indigo nimbus of dew. Here, in the waterfall, whose flute of champagne spills forth from the mill race on a cliff to decant itself into a cove of sea foam. Here in the lagoon overlit by the primrose flickers from a crowd of flashbulbs going off in a thundercloud. Here in the iridescent husk of a crab by the shore, its shell blown asunder as though its heart has been incinerated by a tiny star. Here in the magenta balloon of a jellyfish from the order of Narcomedusae, floating like a banshee draped in the tatters of a bloody shroud. Here in the silhouette of a horse head rearing up through a fog bank of fuchsia smoke on the battlefield. Here in the butterfly, here in the hourglass. Hell itself cannot suppress the loveliness of these infinite infernos raging in the distance so far away from us that when we gaze upon such furnaces, our souls do not ignite a blaze but shiver in the darkness. Each of us is but a cosmonaut in distress, stranded and marooned in space, where we dread immersion in the shadowed vastness, because it is our isolation and our ignorance made visible. None of us can escape its pull. Even when we close our eyes against it, we have seen it in our sleep, yet we cannot gaze upon its face unless we view it through the mirrored hexagons of our instruments. It is waiting for us, hoarding time somewhere in the Eridanus supervoid, a zone of emptiness so vast and deep that it has hollowed out the cosmos. It is but a pinpoint in such blackness, a microscopic singularity infecting us like a virus. It is what must utterly condemn us. To be the firefly descending through the black spires of tamaracks in the forest fire at night. To be the azure spark that skates across the plate of steel being split by a xenon laser. To be the fleck of radium painted on the ceiling of the planetarium. To be the Klieg light in the filigree of cities viewed from orbit on the night side of the globe. To be the photon in the solar winds which blast through worlds like zephyrs through an abandoned field of dandelion wisps. To be the chip of mica spinning in the rosy rays of sunlight from a supergiant going nova. To be the frozen cinder that scintillates in the stroboscope of a pulsar. To be the final spore drifting through the stellar abysses where some absent-minded civilization has forgotten to turn off its wars. To be the moat of dust upon which the blowtorch gorges. To be the fey imp in all living things yet to be destroyed. Who am I, if not some neglected astronaut being immolated by a fierce aurora while striding in my spacesuit across the avenue of the Americas? Who am I, if not some phantom fighter pilot dreaming that while weightless during freefall through a vacuum, my glass visor shatters at the sight of a turtle dove? Who am I, if not some poltergeist imprisoned in a ruby room aboard a ship, now derelict in the shoals offshore from a swelling fireball? Yes, I have a soul like you, but mine is made of little robots, and no one sings me lullabies, 
and no one makes me close my eyes. And so I throw the windows wide to call to you across the skies. And yet I know that nowhere among these glowing nebulae do any of you exist. Who am I if not some stowaway in a microbe or some castaway in a seedlet? And yet I must let loose upon the world my perfect malware. It is like the voice of a child saying goodbye in the dark. Thank you, Ronald.